Hi there, I'm Colin Maxwell. I'm the writer of several comic books and war stories. I've recently started writing for Commando, which is published by DC Thompson, and this is my first book for them, Five Little Soldier Boys, which is a murder mystery story set during World War II. But I also write true war stories as well, so let's have a little look at some of the books that I've done. So we've got Tales of Bruce and Wallace, which tells the story of those two famous Scottish heroes. There's Raid on the Fourth, which tells the story of the first air raid of World War II. And Flight of the Eagle, which tells the story of a Polish submarine which escaped from the Baltic Sea to Scotland. So let's have a little look at that last one. On the 1st of September 1939, the Orzo, or Eagle, along with four other submarines of the Polish Navy, left our harbour on Operation Vorek, the plan to defend Poland's Baltic coast from the German invasion. Sent to patrol the Gulf of Gdansk, the Eagle witnessed the relentless bombing of the Polish coast by the Luftwaffe. After an attack by enemy aircraft, the Eagle's captain moved the submarine to the wider sea, risking a cordon of anti-submarine boats and a minefield. The Eagle patrolled for targets for many days, and during this time the captain fell ill and the submarine developed mechanical problems. Directed by the naval command to return to base or leave their captain in a neutral port, the Eagle headed for Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. Allowed 24 hours in a neutral port under the Hague Convention, the captain was transferred to hospital while the crew made the necessary repairs. Lieutenant Jan Grudinski, executive officer of the Eagle, took command of the vessel. He was young and relatively inexperienced, but he would soon gain the respect of the crew. Meanwhile, the German authorities pressured the Estonians to inter the Eagle and its crew. The Eagle's departure was delayed when a German vessel at Tallinn had to depart. The sudden arrival of Estonian soldiers shocked the Eagle's crew and they were informed that they had overstayed their welcome. The crew felt they had been tricked into staying in Tallinn, but their argument fell on deaf ears. The Eagle's navigation charts were removed, their weapons disarmed and their torpedoes taken away. Putting up a semblance of compliance, the crew, led by Grzynski, were secretly plotting their escape. One of the crew cut the cable of the hoist removing their torpedoes, leaving the Eagle with only a handful of its weapons. Another crew member, under the pretext of fishing in the harbour, secretly plumbed the depths to chart an escape route for the submarine. The crew captured their Estonian guards and bundled them into the submarine. A crewman cut the power to the lights overlooking the Eagle, and the mooring cables were cut. Firing up the engines in the darkness, the Eagle made for the open sea. Suddenly, the Eagle hit an underwater obstacle and became stuck. Blowing its ballast tanks and reversing its engines, the Eagle managed to break free and continue its journey. By now the Eagle had come under fire and the danger grew worse as it reached the open sea and became a target for the coastal guns. Forced underwater, the Eagle was pursued by surface boats and attacked with depth charges. The Eagle continued its mission to search for enemy vessels, but when supplies began to run low, the decision was made to head for Britain to join the Allies. The two Estonian guards who had been bundled aboard the submarine were dropped near the Swedish coast in the Eagle's dinghy. Then the Eagle continued its journey through the narrow straits to the North Sea. It was a dangerous journey, but the Eagle made it unscathed. Reaching the rendezvous point near the Isle of May off the coast of Scotland, the Eagle sent a weak radio message to the Allies. The Royal Naval vessel HMS Valoris arrived to escort the submarine to the port of Rosyth. Soon the Eagle was refitted and the crew were able to rejoin the fight as part of the second submarine flotilla. I do hope you enjoy the rest of the online Defend Fife Festival. If you're interested in reading more about the Orzo, you can pick up the book from maximised.co.uk.